Hello everyone, welcome to a new e tutorial series. Uh, this time we're going to make a little prop barrier that you can just drop into your environments. Um, I've been playing a lot of Final Fantasy VII Remake recently. Um, one thing I noticed when you are playing it is how nice and detailed a lot of the environments look. And a large part of it is down to the prop placement. And what's uh, happened here is fairly common in um, 3D game environment design, but a lot of my students always seem to forget about is the importance of just placing a lot of props in your environment and it lets everyone feel a lot more lived in gives it a lot more personality you can see here we've got crates we've got barrels uh, speakers benches uh, even on the walls we've got wee posters things like that uh, if we look at a few other examples um let this load in here thing forever uh little crates and things like that we've even actually got like little uh, dirt piles and stuff that can be just placed on there and blend in with the ground uh, do I have another example here? That is it. Um, these things all help make it look really, really lived in uh, and can help enhance your environments. Uh, I'll also point out here, we've got these wee fences and things, which, although they're kind of built into the environment, these are created just as little modular kits as well. It can just be placed and dropped in there uh, and help to fill it out and give a bit more texture, a bit more definition to the landscape. So what we're going to create today is a little construction barrier. Um, this is one of the props I actually saw in Final Fantasy that I thought would be kind of cool to create. I couldn't get a screenshot of it, but it's something similar to what we're looking at here on screen. Uh, these little barriers, just um, if you see something under construction or we're trying to stop pedestrians walking a certain way, um, we can make something. I'm going to make something fairly similar to this little picture here. Uh, just keep it nice and easy. Uh, a nice simple wee construction um, again for you guys your beginners we're going to keep it really easy so we'll close this we will go over to 3d studio max and we will get started let me see and we are on the correct thing yes we are okay so we're going to keep this one really really simple in terms of modeling uh it'll be a really simple wee unwrap as well so what we're going to do, we want to always be thinking as well in our human scale. So when we're making this, I'm going to start with a cylinder. But be thinking when it comes to sizing it out, what size do we actually want it to be? When we drop our first wee cylinder on here, um, it doesn't matter what size we make it. It can look big or small on screen, but we need to make sure it's actually uh, in real world size, uh, something correct. So if I look on my parameters here on the right hand side, we'll see we've got a radius of 7 centimeters and a height of 30 centimeters. So that's about a foot off the ground, it's not very high at all. I want this to be about 80 centimeters. So I'm just going to type in 80, and there we go. Um, and I'm using centimeters because uh, a lot of our projects, our students work in the Unreal Engine, and the Unreal Engine defaults to work in centimeters as well. So if you've watched any of my videos, you'll have seen me do this before, but if not, we want to set it to centimeters. Uh, we're going to go to customize, we're going to go to unit setup, and we're just going to click in here and just set, make sure it's set to metric and centimeters. And we can also go into system unit setup as well, and just make sure that is set to centimeters. We just click in here and choose the appropriate one, set it to centimeters. There we go. So we've got our little cylinder, uh, probably a bit too thick there. Radius of 7 centimeters means it's uh, a total diameter of about uh, 14 15 centimeters. So I think the rate, the an actual thickness of the whole tube, about 7, would be nice. So I'm going to type in 3.5. Uh, if you remember from your mathematics, uh, let me just have cap segments here. F4. That's not showing me my cap segments. Why are you not showing me my cap segments? Hmm, it's not showing me my cap segments, but we will, uh, it doesn't matter. Just remember that the radius is from the center to the edge. So the radius doesn't tell you the whole width of it. Radius just goes from the center of the circle out to the edge. So the whole width of it will be twice that. So when I want my, oh, that's why that's not nice. Here we go. There we are. Yeah, so radius is 3.5. That represents from the center out the diameter is the full width so with this has a radius of 3.5 centimeters as we can see here the full width of this cylinder is seven centimeters and i think that's about right uh 
so okay i can work with this that's not too bad height segments i don't need five i might lower this down i might actually lower this down to two for now uh and that's okay what i'm going to do i'm going to right click this and convert to editable poly and just give my terrible laptop time to catch up i'm going to click on my vertex mode again let it catch up and I'm going to select all these vertices here, just that one wee ring that I left in there. It's like my move tool. Move this down quite low. Just like that. There we go. And what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to go top level. I'm now going to select these polygons. I'm going to my polygon sub-object mode, so make sure that's blue. I'm going to select these and make sure it's got the whole ring round. Yep, perfect. And that's all it's selected. And I'm going to come to my extrude tool. I'm going to click the little settings box beside it. And that gives me this little menu here. Now this is not what I want. Obviously that looks terrible. What we need to do is swap this from group, this little option here, change that to local normal. And that will make each polygon expand out the way. I've explained before in other videos what the normal is, but the normal is basically the direction that that polygon is facing. Uh, so this is going to be the kind of the base that this uh, stands upon. So I'm going to make that maybe about that. Yep, that's okay. And that's perfect. Uh, don't, no, I don't want a top level just yet. I'm actually going to go to my edge mode. And just to make it a little bit prettier, I'm going to just double click this wee ring at the top. You select all of it. And then I'm just going to move this down a little bit just to taper it. Take that hard edge off. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So, what I'm going to add on top is a little uh, a little reflector and a little illuminating light. And all I'm going to do for that, I'm going to get another cylinder and make it quite small. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. And in fact, before I do that, I'm going to click my angle snaps so that I can see precisely what angle it's going to be. There we go, 90 degrees. And just man position this here. I'm not being too precise with it. That's okay there. Uh, what I could maybe do is I'll come back to this one. Actually, I'll just move this up a little bit. I'm going to come back here, and I've got this little uh, extra cap segment on top. And I'm just going to select all of these polys in the middle. And how I'm going to do that? Whoops! I'm going to select this very, very inner vertex, and then I'm going to Control click where it says Polygon here. And when I do that, it will select all the polygons this little vertex is attached to. And I'll automatically select those for me. It's just a faster way of doing it than clicking every one of them manually. So do that, and I'm just going to extrude this out just into a wee tiny, uh, not very tall at all, maybe about that. Just a little kind of a stand for that to sit on. So I can go back to top level. And then pull me down. That is almost perfect. I'm just going to increase the height of this wee cylinder. Just so we'll cover that whole thing. And I'm just eyeballing this. I'm not really measuring anything out. It's just uh, to do it quick and nasty. You can take more time measuring out more precise than this. You can change the size of these. Um, but I'm not going to worry too much about it. Uh, height segment. I just want one height segment. Don't need any more. I'm going to leave that cap segment on though. Um, bah, 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 bah. Do I want to do more? Nope, that's grand. So, with this, I could model in some geometry or I could leave it low poly. I think, I think just for, for your benefit, I'm going to model in a bit of detail there. So, I'm going to convert that to edible poly. I'm going to select this ring. 
and we're going to expand it out a little bit. Move it a bit there, and then I am going to. Hmm, what am I going to do? Actually, quite this way, I'm going to shrink this down again just a little bit, and then I'm going to hit the chamfer button. Now we normally use chamfer on corners, and it sort of softens the corner. Uh, but we can also chamfer a single edge to turn it into two edges. So you can see there now we've got two edges, two lines instead of one. There's other ways you could have done that, but chamfer is just a, a quick wee way for stuff like this. Um, and that's okay. I'm going to hit OK on that. And just pull these out a wee bit closer to the edge. That's okay. Now, uh, I'm going to go into my polygon mode. I'm going to hit the number 4 key on my keyboard. And that will automatically switch me to polygon mode. And I'm just going to select one polygon, hold shift, and then select an adjacent polygon. And that allows me to select the whole ring. Then I'm going to go to extrude. And I'm going to extrude this just inwards, ever so slightly, just a tiny wee amount. Not really measuring it, just uh, eyeballing it. And there we go. And that just gives us a little bit of a inset. So this is going to be kind of the, the plastic housing. And then this ring of polish here is going to be um, a little like, reflective orange light on top. So yeah, I'm happy enough with that. I'm going to go to top level. Uh, and that's effectively one half of our barrier made up of these two objects. So I'm going to select you and I'm going to select my move key. I'm going to hold shift. Now this is 80 centimeters tall. I want to be a little bit wider, the whole barrier a little bit wider. So I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to drag this out. I'm looking down here at the bottom where these numbers are. You can see my cursor over that. You can see in centimeters how far I'm moving it. So I want to move this about 150. That'll make each barrier about a meter and a half. Maybe a wee bit more. Maybe a bit. No, 150 is good. Again, not being too exact. Um, and I'm just going to set this to a copy. Yeah, copy's fine. Copy's grand, yeah. So that's that. Um, if you were doing a modular kit or certain sizes, depending on your what you're doing, you might want to make these more exact sizes. But I'm just eyeballing it, as I say. So now, next thing I want to do, I'm going to select a box and just make a very, very narrow little box here. Uh, just roughly the size. And I'm going to move this. And if you want to, you can look at your front view or your side view, whichever one you need to. And just eyeball that. Whoops. Better into position. So that's okay there. I think my width is maybe a wee bit too thick. So this is going to be like a plank of wood. Let me look here. Width six centimeters. Yep, you're never going to get a six centimeter thing of wood. It probably will be about two or three. So there we go. Height, we'll maybe make that around 22, 23. Yep, that'll do lovely. And we'll just move it up as well. Just to about there. And there we go. That's not too bad. Now, I don't want to leave this uh, floating in the middle, so I need to extend it out. Uh, what I'm going to do is, um, what I don't want to do, I don't want to just take my scale tool and scale out like this. I don't want to do that because when we take it back into Unreal, that scale might not apply. 3D Studio Max is a bit odd about stuff like that. So uh, scales, rotations, things like that. I don't like doing them necessarily with this tool too much. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this directly to an edible poly. And then I'm going to grab these vertices. I'm going to grab all of these ones and pull them over. And I'm going to grab all of these ones and pull them over as well. To just about where they're touching. And that's good. And I'm looking at them eyeballing it a wee bit and I think that barrier is maybe a bit too tall, so I might just pull up just the tiniest, tiniest, tiniest wee amount. Again, just proportionally so it looks better. So how are we for time here? 14 minutes. Okay. Um, last little thing that I will do, I'm just going to create a tiny little clamp to hold this in place. So box, I'm going to make another little box. 
And this is a very cheap, nasty way of doing this. Not necessarily the best way, but it will do. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this, uh, let me see, not width, not height, uh, an extra length segment. Yes, that's what I want. And I'm going to move you into position, just eyeball you. Like so. And that's not too bad there. Uh, so I'm going to convert this to an edible poly. And now I'm going to select my vertices. And I'm just going to select these edge ones here. I'm going to just knock them down a little bit like that. Maybe take this metal ring and just make sure you've got the back side selected here. And maybe just move these out a little bit. Just to get a better shape. Uh, and in fact, I don't need it to be this deep at all. So we take everything here and move it back to about there. And then I'm just going to take every part of this and I'm just going to scale it down a little bit narrower. There we go. Yeah, that's not too bad now. And what I will do is I will... I'm going to attach a few of these together. I'm going to attach that to here. And I'm even going to attach this top piece to that as well. So that they're all one. Uh, actually, no I'm not. I'm not going to do that at all. And first of all, I'm going to take this, uh, create a copy of it. So I'm going to shift and drag. There we go. I forgot I need an armor for the other side. Uh, yeah, create a copy of it. And I'm just going to rotate it 180 degrees. There's other things we can do. We can mirror, we can uh, put the symmetry modifier on. But they are a wee bit uh, complicated because we can f we can end up flipping the normals and stuff when we export. So instead, I'm just going to eyeball these and make sure they're roughly in the same position. And the mirror, sorry, not the mirror, the rotation will do. Uh, yep, you're good there. So there we go. So now what I will do is select you, attach, and I'll attach all these. Uh, no, I'll just attach those ones there. Uh, then I will select this one on and attach these all together in one. Technically, what we could do, if we really wanted to, is just make this piece and just make this piece and not worry about the second leg. And when we actually get into Unreal, we could assemble this together because effectively this is just the same piece as this. Um, and I meant that we could also then have like a broken version of this where this piece is kind of hanging off the ground or we just have one of these pillars uh, lying horizontal on the ground. You could do that. That option is there. Um, if you were to model these both separately. And you might want to do that because then you could reuse this mid piece and maybe make a stack of them for a bigger barrier or something like that. Tarry up to yourself, um, but we'll stick with this one just making uh, the one single uh, full prop. So here we go. Uh, what we're going to do, I'm going to call this uh, leg one uh, barrier underscore leg underscore one. Select you here, barrier underscore leg underscore two, and we'll call this one. Barrier underscore mid. And it's a little bit of a pain in the backside doing all that, but it really will come in handy when we get into your game engine and we have 500 different game objects and you're trying to differentiate. If you just leave them all and you have a thousand objects called cylinder one, cylinder 572, etc., that can be really, really annoying. So do get into the habit of naming these correctly. Okay, so select you, you, and you. Now we're going to add the unwrap to this. So I'm just going to select all three of them and add the same unwrap UVW to all of them. And I'm going to scroll down on my modifier panel to open UV editor. 
There we go. Now this, uh, let me see, how long for time? More than 20 minutes. Uh, do you know what we'll do? We'll actually stop it there for this video. We'll unwrap separately in a different video. So I'm going to close that for now. I'm going to save this project. And again, find somewhere on your desktop, uh, not your desktop, on your computer, where you can save it, give it a good name, good file structure. So I have a dedicated artwork folder in here, call this Random Experiments. And I'm going to, this is where I keep all my random little projects. Uh, I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it uh, 3D Crash Barrier. Uh, in here, we'll call this um, prop underscore uh, crash barrier. It's actually not a crash barrier at all. Um, it's just like a, a an access barrier, but who cares? That'll do. So yeah, we'll save that, and we'll come back in the next video where we'll unwrap it. So thank you for watching, and I will see you very, very soon.